The story of the clan leader Topknot started out in a comic book called *Alien vs. Predator: Blood Time*. It was a look into Topknot's early time as a clan leader, where he led a group of young hunters through their initiation process, something we all know as the rite of passage, where a Yawuchiwa must slay a xenomorph in live combat. If the hunter is successful and manages to survive, they must mark themselves. To show they are now blooded hunters, the price of failure is death. The main characters during this hunt would be the leader Topknot, a young version of Lightstepper, and also Two Stripes. For two days, the group has made their way through a murky swamp. While Lightstepper was the obedient, honorable member, Two Stripes was the type who would doubt their leader and even cause tension amongst other members. The trail is picked up by Topknot. So the hunt continues. Lightstepper is then separated from the group and comes into contact with a xenomorph. He battles it alone, all while Two Stripes watches him, hidden away in the trees. The young hunter fights off the alien and emerges victorious, but at what cost? He suffered massive injuries from the alien's acid blood. His chest is burning, and his right arm has melted away. It seems that Lightstepper has fought his last battle. This is when Two Stripes gets an idea. He takes the xenomorph body and marks himself to make it seem like he fought an alien. He claims the trophy as his own, which is a dishonorable act. When he returns to regroup with the others, he finds out that Lightstepper has survived, and he told everyone what happened. To uphold the Predator code of honor and traditions, Topknot makes a strict but meaningful decision. Two Stripes has his armor and weapons taken away, and is left on the planet as the others leave. He has paid the price for his lies and treachery. Topknot would appear again during the story of Machiko Noguchi. He would come to the planet Ryushi to find out what happened to Dashande and his team. This picks up two years after Dashande has already passed away, and Machiko is settled down in a house in the desert. And the time has come; they have returned. She only hopes that her answer will be accepted by the others. She always knew the others would come back to get answers about what happened to the Shande, who was also known as Broken Tusk. Machiko would track them down and bravely approach them, hoping that the gift passed down by the Shande would explain everything. She wanted to tell them that Broken Tusk was not a failure, that he died honorably in combat, and while she fought alongside him. She was given the mark of his clan, and since the Shande did not return home, that would mean she was the only survivor of that clan, even though she was accepted by the Shande right before he passed away. And so Topknot accepts her into his clan. The story continues when they land on a xenomorph-infested planet. Topknot and his members have come to seek honor and glory, to walk away with many trophies and tales of combat. Machiko is given predator armor and weapons to fight alongside them, but this mission was different. It was not just a hunt; it was a war. They were given the task of capturing a queen alien, and with so many xenomorphs around them, they were forced to ignore the hunting laws of matchmaking. Normally, the hunter would use weapons equal to their targets, but since they were outnumbered, they would use more plasma-based weapons. The more experienced hunters at the front of their defense would absorb most of the attack, and for their efforts, they would receive the greatest credit for their success. The younger hunters were set up at the back with plasma weapons, although they were not as honorable. They were necessary for this task, and competition for trophies was fierce. But Chica was teamed up with Shorty, the smallest of the members. During this battle, Shorty was jumped by an alien, only to be saved by a human. To be rescued by a human female was shameful, and it was worse when his peers saw it happen. They laughed at Shorty and mocked him. When they locate the queen in the hive, they use some type of rope to restrain her, but she breaks free and kills the predator three spot. Machiko is ordered to remain at the back, but she goes against her orders and grabs onto the rope. Her actions ensure the capture of the queen, but her bravery is not accepted by Topknot. Yes, they captured the queen. But the leader has learned something about Machiko. She will disobey her leader. Her trust within their clan is now put into question. Machiko has also learned something about these hunters. The leader will sometimes choose the success of their mission 
over the lives of his clan members. Her rival Shorty would try to get revenge against her. After they captured the queen, he would close the door on her, trapped and almost nowhere to go, but Chico manages to escape into the ceiling, but just barely. It seems that no matter how many times she proves herself to the others, she still feels like an outcast. Even when she helped save the mission, nobody thanked her. Her decision to join the hunters now comes into question. Why did she join these alien hunters one year ago? Why did she think she would fit in? And so, she sits in her room and decides what to do. Meanwhile, she also messes around with a device she brought from Ryushi. She tries to scan for a signal, but all she gets is static. When the last group of young hunters returns, Lightstepper is seen once again, and he returns with what looks like a trophy, but it's human. Machigo breaks the code of honor. She touches the trophy that belongs to another hunter. She is swatted away by Lightstepper, and only wonders how the battle went down. Surely, it must have been a fair fight. Machiko is then seen with Topknot, who only gives her hand signals to communicate, but she understands. Because of her actions, she is now seen as a lesser member within the clan, with very little honor. So, she must reclaim it by proving herself once again. She has to fight against Shorty. There's an old saying, you're only as good as your last fight. And so, her skills in hand-to-hand -hand combat are put to the test. Despite being a female human, Machiko manages to outclass the young Yauchua, but Shorty's friends decide to intervene. They cheat in trying to help Shorty. Knowing she might die right there, she decides to throw the fight and lets him win. As the clan approaches the planet Bunda that has been seeded with aliens, they rally up and prepare for their upcoming hunt. But Machiko is left out of this. As the hunters take out xenomorphs on the planet, they approach a human settlement and attack. They send out a transmission and Machiko hears it, and so she chooses her human side. She kills predators on the ship and escapes to help them. When she finds the survivors, they all bump into Topknot and his group. And Topknot knows Machiko is now their worst enemy. She has broken three of their rules. Disobeying a leader, touching another hunter's trophy, and now killing other predators. Machiko Noguchi ends up getting revenge on Shorty by ending his life in combat, and as for Topknot, it is presumed that he perished during this battle, which brings us to the end of his story. Different predators will have names that can be linked to them physically, for example, Broken Tusk, Shorty, Lefty, and Hornhead, and the same thing can be said about Topknot, where his name is linked to samurai warriors. They wore their hair in the famous Topknot style. It's also a way to emphasize on their status within Yauchua society. When the 2010 video game Alien vs Predator was released, the collector edition did have two comic book stories included, the story about the Shande, also known as Broken Tusk, which gave you an insight into how and why they hunt xenomorphs. The other comic book story was about Topknot, and it was a look back into his past during his time when he led a group of young hunters to hunt xenomorphs. I have done videos covering other predators and their story. This includes Dashande, Lightstepper, Titianed, Ahab, Hornhead, Prince Predator, Scarface, Spartan, Lord Predator, The Serpent Hunter, Stoneheart, Dark Predator, Killer Predators, and that's just to name the males. I've also covered topics on female predators like Big Mama, Sister Midnight, Hashori, and Vigouti. Aside from that, my channel has a vast amount of videos covering more stuff about predators, like their weapons, hierarchy, rituals, hunting laws, their code of honor, ancient pyramids, bad blood predators, elder predators, and a lot more. So have a look around my channel, and I'm sure you can find something that can interest you. So this marks the end of the video. I will leave links to the story of the Shande and Michiko Noguchi, so you can watch them and learn their full story. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like on it. If you want to see more content around Predator lore, then you can subscribe with notifications turned on. You can also contact me on Twitter or Instagram, so follow me on those platforms. Thanks for watching. My name is Carlos, or Acid Glow, and I'll see you on the next hunt.
Intruder alert. 